Bing Bong, Wiggle Wiggle Dum Dum, Rob Schlob Dobby and Dingleheim. That's what the script says, so I have to read it. Just when you thought the war between Steam and the Epic Game Store was maybe starting to cool down, one of the biggest offensives yet has been launched. Epic has acquired Psyonix, the developer of popular esports game Rocket League. Even worse, Epic left gamers to assume the worst about Rocket League's fate on Steam, initially saying that the game would come to the Epic Game Store in late 2019 and would continue to be supported on Steam in the meantime. But does that mean eventually support will stop for Steam users? Psyonix themselves said players on Steam can look forward to continued support. While Epic does give developers greater revenue share and their resources will no doubt support Rocket League's status as an eSport, it's these kind of uncertainties that make the whole Epic vs Steam fight so annoying. Like, will Steam users get all future updates? Will Riley be forced to play using a controller instead of a mouse and keyboard? Never! <laughs> no! One thing that is certain is Respawn's tolerance for cheaters. It's zero. After promising to crack down on cheating, the Apex Legends developer announced that they've blocked 770,000 players, 300,000 new accounts, and 4,000 cheat sellers. They've also made it easier to report cheats in game, added new automatic cheat detecting features, and they're working with cheating experts to enact a full scale anti cheat defense. Yeah, you better freaking watch out, you cheaters! Respawn says this is only the beginning of their anti cheater campaign, and they can't share more details now, as that would give a heads up to the cheaters, Riley. It seems like they already gave a bunch of details about it. And what's TechLinked without a story about Facebook being ridiculous? We've already heard that Facebook was developing a digital currency for use within WhatsApp, but now reports are emerging about a cryptocurrency meant for Facebook itself. The company is apparently trying to raise a billion dollars from financial institutions to help it develop the currency, which would be a stable coin whose value is tethered to other conventional currencies like the dollar. Dealing with people's money, would raise even more questions about personal privacy, but at least Facebook is asking the federal government for help with that. In exchange for ending a federal probe into its privacy problems, the company told the FTC it would submit to greater oversight of its data collection practices. And I can't blame them. From what I've heard, probes can be pretty uncomfortable. <clears throat> I'm getting double probed tonight. Now it's time for quick bits. Brought to you by the Marlin screwdriver set from iFixit. Each fixed blade screwdriver features an ergonomic, knurled, rubberized handle with a swivel top, plus a black oxide coated tip, so it hangs onto tiny screws with a steel grip. Pretty much everyone here at Linus Media Group uses an iFixit kit, so you can trust us when we say you can trust them. iFixit's Marlin screwdrivers are manufactured in Germany and backed by iFixit's lifetime warranty. So get yours for $24.99 at iFixit.com forward slash Linus, or at the link in the video description. Onto the quick bits. The Pixel 3a is rumored to be revealed on May 7th, but a Best Buy in Ohio doesn't respect the laws of man, nor nature. The store put some Pixel 3as on the shelf for anyone, including the folks at Android Police, to see. Woo, woo, Android Police are here, we got you. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> There have been a plethora of leaks about these devices already, but we'll wait until next week to get the info straight from the source. Oh, Google I.O., that's some good source. The Overwatch League has been pretty successful with its city-based team system, so Activision Blizzard is going to try the same thing with Call of Duty. Atlanta, Dallas, New York, Paris, and Toronto will get their own teams, each presumably receiving a dutiful call to represent their city, and or sizable sums of money. Researchers at Microsoft have revealed Torque, a controller prototype for virtual reality that would allow users to feel virtual objects by providing haptic feedback through a specially developed finger module. It's apparently especially good at simulating squishy balls. So if you've been stressed at work, you can just go on home, pop on the VR headset, and, and squeeze those anxieties away in virtual squish space. Mm. VR squishy balls? That's what I'm looking for. I, I can't wait for VR Bounty Castle. YouTube is planning on taking its original content out from behind the YouTube premium paywall and making it available, finally, to good old regular plebs like me, I'm so cheap. 
Upcoming original shows will be ad supported and existing premium content will also be available for a limited time. I guess YouTube figured they're not Netflix. They figured it out. Netflix is Netflix. Are they, are they Hulu? They might be Hulu. Maybe. <laughs> and there's a potential path to peace in the never ending battle between pirated retro game emulators and game producers. Antstream, which just got funded on Kickstarter, is a streaming service that would grant access to over 2,000 classic titles from the ZX Spectrum, Amiga, Commodore 64, Sega Genesis, and the arcade. The company's owners are sourcing licenses for the games, and if they're successful, Antstream could serve to benefit game rights holders and retro enthusiasts alike. It's just, that would be win, win. There's no way Nintendo's gonna join, is yeah, there? No. There's also no way we're gonna continue this episode because it's over. Thanks for watching everybody. More tech news is on the way on Monday. In fact, it might already be here, depending on when you are. But we can't talk about it until Monday. It's under embargo until then, you time traveling perverts. For <laughs> <laughs> I, oof.